this is satellite based building growth monitoring right like so built up growth monitoring i am using this map uh, to determine the new boundary of bengaluru corporation imagine the scale that you are going to so i am not going i mean this is the first time it will be it will be determined through satellites and stuff but anyways why i require further more information is that the open source is uh, you know 10 meter through sentinel data 30 meter resolution in landsat data which is coarse now i need a built up footprints now google has provided one version of it we do not know how much they would provide afterwards right like so one time step they have provided and that's it we do not know the next time step will that they will provide or not etc etc why i require is actually we use this map during covid time huh, to figure out population densities so population densities this is mumbai again population density estimates using building heights building usage type and uh, the previously recorded population numbers over there we apportioned it and we created population density maps and this is very much useful for planning exercise so in uh, uh, if you are doing any of the transport uh, mobility plans you need to know how many people live there if you are doing any form of urban planning you need to know how many people are living there so you need the building footprints so in bengaluru for example we do the enumeration block level so 16000 enumeration blocks are there in bangalore corporation as per 2011 census larger so 16000 uh, enumeration blocks for 83 lakh people so i can imagine how much the number would be 83 lakh divided by 16000 so that is the rough estimate um, but yeah i mean building footprint is actually very much useful for uh, this kind of a planning exercise as well as uh, the next level when we are going this is a little bit complicated map actually um so what you are seeing is actually bengaluru municipal corporation this is a new metro line that was planned this map was prepared in 2017 i think i don't remember the exact year 2000 no that data is from 2015 uh, year of preparation i didn't put it i'm sorry, oh, sorry. It, this is later only 2020 uh so this was the proposed uh, metro line towards the airport um and uh, this is the you know circles around uh, that metro station color corresponds to what type of use it is residential commercial etc etc now what am i trying to do with that one big concept around metro and even in uh, this suburban train is land value capture and uh, transit oriented development what is transit oriented development is that it's not just that the train is passing through nearby how many people are living within that accessible distance to it and how much build, buildings are there how much can it expand so it depends on the plot size the road width size how much you can expand right like so it doesn't mean that metro came suddenly everyone builds a skyscraper that's not going to happen it depends on how much plot size you have and everything around that so this is uh, we call it as fir floor area ratio how much uh, floor i mean it's basically like uh, the total number of built up say for example you have let's say this is 1000 square feet uh you have three floors 3000 square feet total land is uh, 2000 square feet means 3000 divided by 2000 is your fir how much you have consumed now the thing is that governments have regulations on how much you can consume based on the plot size based on the road width and everything around it so i overlaid that building data on top of this plot size and figured out who has consumed how much that plot has consumed how much now now i know how much it can grow further what's the floor area ratio can um you have 1000 square feet of land, i mean building this is one floor 1000 square feet now we have three floors so 3000 square feet so that is square foot over plot size over plot size so bit square yeah so now the thing is uh, the rule was uh, you can consume a maximum of uh, four floor area ratio should be 4 around metro but this ratio changes when you don't have yeah 4 this is actual consumed no 4 is theoretically possible but thing is that the road size and everything will reduce it if you are having a smaller uh, road in front of you you cannot uh, you are not allowed to construct taller buildings because you'll have too many people going into that smaller road right so because of that you have to be a little bit careful so now that building data we used it and we overlaid it on this one so this is 
one of the application I, I know this is a little bit complicated this is the first time many of you might be seeing this but this is very much useful in planning urban planning it's very very critical for us um, now I didn't put lots of slides before but uh, there are so many slides on that we use machine learning to um, study the growth patterns of the past and we started projecting if business I mean in case of business as usual scenarios as well as actually we are doing other business as usual, usual scenarios to figure out where the growth will happen etc. This is what we projected for 2013, 2019 I think, 2013 and 2050 we did uh, projections. So this is actually useful for figuring out what is the business as usual scenario or if you are doing a, uh, let's say for example, I want to introduce a new metro line, then it would change the equation and so on and so forth. So we began giving different scenarios for the government to desire upon. So this itself is uh, somewhat uh, difficult <laughs> because we had to get uh, so much data to study it. So to machine learn it, I mean in the sense like for the machine to learn it, uh, we had to provide so much of samples and underlying parameters also we had to provide. So what are the factors that are going to affect it? Like for example, bus stands, um, you know, railway station locations, uh, road networks, and so many, so much of information is there out there and uh, we didn't have for many cities. So uh, to do this basic uh, thing itself, it takes a little bit of time. So actually we did this for Delhi and Hyderabad and uh, I don't rem recall if I did it for any other place etc. I'll go into the transport and mobility sector. So I talked about uh, road network. One big problem is that there is no good road network data for India out in the open. There is open street map which can be crowd, I mean which is created by crowd but it is not complete. And the problem of, uh, it's not incompletion that creates a problem. But the rate of incompletion is different between different cities and within the same city itself. For example, if you are looking at core Bengaluru, 100% success, 100% it will match on the ground. No doubts about it. But if you are looking at, let's say, Patna, even in the core, you will have only 70 or 80 percentage match. And in the peripheries, you will miss out a lot. Now, government also doesn't have, I mean, not every government, but every city governments, but many of the city governments do not have this network. Even if they have the network, they do not have any information on the hierarchy or they do not have the information on, you know, width, how much ROW is available and all those things, it's not available. It's very much required for planning purpose because this actually study is actually, we were trying to do road network assessments. Actually, a Mumbai based organization helped us in digitizing it uh, because uh, even satellite based ones, if you want to learn machine learning, because of the so many questions around the estimates that come out of it, etc, etc, we had we didn't have that, but luckily we had the manpower. We didn't have the, you know, computing power, but we had the manpower, so we tasked it to create for 20 cities. But this is one time snapshot. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, this is actually uh, uh, road density map. Uh, so uh, basically in each of these pixels, we calculate how much road is around us. I'll go into it like I'll go in depth into it like what it means and how it uh, how it is useful for us. But this is one of the works that we are doing. So this is for example, uh, road infrastructure map of I mean density map of Bangalore. It's a very coarse map I have just put it uh, for understanding. Blue means high road density and red means poor road density. Now how it I mean if you are having a proper grid network or something of that sort you'll have a you'll score high. But if you are having sparse roads here and there, etc., etc., where built up has come, then it will come up low. Uh, now, if anyone has been to Bangalore, they will know Jayanagar doesn't have that much of a traffic issue. Whitefield has. It's not a problem of that there is no roads, but the thing is that you don't have a proper network of it. So we have certain indicators to assess it. Like you know, some of them are mentioned over here. There are actually totally some 24 indicators that we created to assess the health of road network in a place. So to identify where to prioritize on roads and where are your gaps, etc, etc. Now what is the problem with it, right? Like if the data is available to the government, then it can do. But the thing is that we don't have any data. We don't have any good data. See, this is a satellite image for Mumbai and uh, I mean a small road junction. We need this width. We need this line. We need center lines. We need to figure out which are going in this direction, which are going in that direction, one ways, etc. I mean, if it is possible, then that is one. But I'm just saying, like, you know, 
then road markings there are actually projects that are pilot projects but uh, we wanted to figure out where are the crossings our transport team in bombay has been actually very involved in uh, working on junction improvement plans for uh, many of the corridors in mumbai and every time they have to sit and digitize there is no data for any of this in us they did a beautiful project with drone images trying to figure out all these rows uh, i mean uh, in the sense right of way in the sense uh, how much space you have to drive vehicles how much extra space is available etc i mean this is satellite image imagine drone image you will get more finer details and stuff this is one application like uh, where you can fill um, just uh, two days or three days before i was actually sitting in this call the thing is that we got it digitized for one time period we want to study for multiple time periods and for many cities and uh, we don't have that bandwidth we were just sitting about it and pondering and i was asking like do you have the money we don't have the money so what do we do uh, i mean every every way to do about it is costlier but you can imagine how do you, see this is the thing with flying drones if you fly one drone you can create so many products out of it which will have co benefits next is traffic this is actually one simple map of uh, you know from the core city if you start out how much time will it take to reach out is a very simple method that we did using google maps okay so what we did was every point out this is the origin that is the destination how much time it will take and reinterpolate it and this is how we got we use this in mumbai climate action plan uh, how we used it is if you go into the document it will be very interesting so fire station from the fire station fire engines have to go out so but 3 o'clock in the morning they can reach quite a lot 3 o'clock at night again quite a lot but what if they have to start out at 7 pm the access would be reduced right so we did a very small assessment with one fire station as a pilot for that but the thing is that traffic data is still with google there is no proper traffic data for the country and without which we are suffering a lot because every city has to come up with something called cmp that is the mobility plan um how much movement happens etc etc and we don't have that and how do you track vehicle volumes etc using cctv footage to figure out how many people are there this is very simple right like so many of you might have worked on it already uh now this was uh, railway is actually mumbai railway because you had a problem of uh, on stampede and uh, you know uh, it collapsed and everything so our teams are actually working on it trying to figure out when it is happening there are, there are two outcomes one is that if it is a known uh, i mean if it is a time when there is a uh, higher uh, footfall crowding then you know how to manage it the other is how to plan it right like so uh, you know these times which time is more etc etc so this is another exercise it will be important i'll quickly go into water resources this is satellite estimated anyways uh, on where cities are where agricultural land is etc one big problem that we are having with water resources again drone can help but uh, satellite images also can help but other devices also can help see major dams you will get people to stand over there or devices to measure how much is the water level for example in states like tamil nadu and karnataka we have tamil nadu has 40000 major tanks uh, water bodies and karnataka has 20000 plus and uh, andhra will also have a lot and maharashtra also has a lot um uh, we don't have mechanisms to measure what is the water level over there even the satellite based one you'll get a horizontal one right like so surface extent i'll get area i won't get volume estimations it's very difficult there are methodologies but you can always explore these things like you know if you have better devices cheaper devices uh where you can place a lot of these things but this is something that we experimented with uh, karnataka and everything how did i use it i don't know how many of you have uh, heard about chennai's water crisis uh, some time back if you had seen that satellite image of uh, the lake shrinking it originated with us we created it uh, using satellite images and same methodologies we applied and figured out how many so before the crisis hit we were uh, you know we were predicting it uh, that this is going to happen because so many lakes are drying up very quickly etc um but yeah water monitoring is something that you can always work on and then you can use that in long term as well Uh, this is bengaluru area areas in red are actually areas where water is reducing water surface water extent is reducing 
So there are many reasons for it. It is not necessarily urbanization. A lot of it is actually because agriculture also has changed. Um, but this is one thing that you can use for long term planning. How do you monitor this lake? It is good that satellite images are there and it can provide to some extent. But how do you do it in a real time for volume etc etc that is something that you can do. So for example, processing radar data is very difficult for us. So we have uh, optical data which is optical data in the sense uh, you know what you see kind of a thing. But radar data is actually much more important because uh, on the same date you do not see any cloud over there. Uh, you know those kind of applications are there. Anyways water volume estimation one sample is there. Next is water quality. Water quality through space is another thing that we are doing because there is no good water quality data across the country. We do not know how, much, how bad it is. There, there, there are devices to measure it. There is manual methods to do it. There are automatic uh, methods to do it, but we do not have a uh, good number of it. This is one problem statement that you can always work on. Uh, this is Hyderabad example. This is Hussain Sagar Lake and you can see that the sewage flow and this is the lake. Uh, part and uh, this is again satellite based one. This is uh, Gagara River and the Ganga River. Can note the difference in the uh, you know uh, suspended solids. This is because lot of sand is coming in. So I was uh, but this again satellites measure only the top surface. I do not know anything about what is below it. Like so one feet below this, I do not know what is the quality of water. Uh, so monitoring groundwater is also a big problem. This is actually a map of. Uh, map from uh, central groundwater board, I mean data from central groundwater board on how do we, um, I mean see this is one of the things that I posted out recently on uh, you know it is not just Bengaluru city that is facing groundwater problems, but the entire region is actually facing it. The core is the Bengaluru city, but the region around it itself the groundwater is over exploited. But uh, groundwater wells are not properly monitored, the, there are not enough devices, the data quality is a questionable one. And uh, so many things around that. This is groundwater uh, board's assessment. Uh, they have already assessed it based on the data that they have. It is available to everyone. Actually, if you go to, uh, uh, there is a portal called WRIS. Uh, if you go to it, you can download that data, but uh, it is not the, I mean, it is not sufficient. Uh, see, particularly, for example, actually, I was working with uh, Kochi government and I was telling them that the biggest problem with sea level rise is not the area that is being shrunk. But actually, because the sea more sea water will be entering your groundwater table, so we don't have any measurement of that. So this is uh, salinity in uh, uh, areas. So these these are the areas, and drought monitoring is another thing. Drought monitoring through satellite images that is soil how wet it is. So if you go outside the campus, actually when I was walking here, I was just noting it like uh, your campus is very wet uh, when compared with the rest of the places, etc. So this is this actually helps in monitoring drought. So this is one problem statement that you can think of. Next is I just put one slide over here. Uh, one very important thing for us is to find out how much water intensive crops or any form of crops. Uh, actually one of my juniors is actually working in a private company uh, for a dif differentiating using satellite images which crop is grown and how much it is grown. Um, why would it use, uh, how many of you trade in stocks or commodities, anyone? MCX. Uh, has uh, you know a lot of these crops you can you know so basically you can sell these commodities and purchase it right. So at the time of their planting itself they try to estimate how much of that crop is growing. So they will figure out how much will be the output in the next year and they can figure out uh, things. This is all done through satellite images and everything. Uh, uh, flood modeling uh, like I said I mean you have the equations, you have the elevation model, start modeling right like so this is a flow. Uh, uh, animation. This is what we did for Mumbai. This is one event of 30 centimeters, and you can see all the prominent I mean, areas that are flood prone uh, for different scenarios. On Link Road, we predicted it, and uh, this was the crowdsourced uh, video from that, and uh, how the model was very helpful in identifying these locations. Actually, the Mumbai Corporation appreciated our effort. Now, imagine all those data sets that I have put together on topography buildings etc you can use drone images etc we use that to figure out how much water will flow in different different scenarios um, again 20 centimeters this is an animation unfortunately it's not playing so the next is storm water storm, storm water situation so you have storm water drains um, there are except mumbai and chennai to my knowledge no city has mapped storm water drains properly 
even in mumbai and chennai the data questions will be there like the quality of it so if you are going to work on uh, so if you are working on flood you do not know what drains are there you do not know how much clogging is there there are no devices to measure uh, clogging in a cheaper way means this is from bangalore this storm water drain inlet is actually like 4 inches above which means 4 inches of water won't go inside only after that it is going to go inside we do not have any measures of this now i know that there are devices that have been prepared elsewhere to pu push the you know during the dry season move it through the drains and get the width and depth and everything around it but we don't have that uh, mechanisms next is clogging we don't have any information on clogging how much it is there etc and this can apply to manual scavenging as well because it's difficult for people to go inside these drain drains and figure out or clean it out etc so this is another one this is places where you don't have drain itself this is chennai uh, so this is how a storm water drain network looks like uh, this is from mumbai this is one of the analysis that we did for pd mello road uh, here in mumbai uh, so but uh, anyway i'll quickly go into it air pollution again the same problem as heat and uh, rainfall you don't have enough uh, stations you don't have good quality stations uh, and uh, very random data comes into our head and we don't have any measures of where it is emitted how it is emitted which are the areas that are observing it uh, imagine you have air pollution monitoring devices on top of traffic signals across the uh, cities uh now this is actually from chennai this is actually a contract that we are putting out for drone actually using drone images try to find debris along the road there are two types of debris one is the garbage and the other is construction debris we wanted to figure it out that is one during that time i mean that is one application straight forward right like so identify these during that time the air quality expert asked me one question and i didn't have a proper answer for it the because at that time i didn't know what the drone the vendor was ready to provide he wanted to add one more payload for air quality monitoring device on top of your drone and fly across the city and get pollution levels at that height so that was one application that he asked me and i said no because i didn't have the device and i didn't have the vendor who had the device anyways i'm these are the applications but uh, before going into it i'll just give some conceptual ideas around these things first is define your problem statement very clearly what is the problem that you are going to work on and uh, those things so every time what happens is that people always start with technology i know to fly drones now what will i solve with it now instead of that saw the present that's why i ordered the presentation in this way see the problem and figure out what can be answered through drones and uh, so i mean you are always you have to understand the solutions that we are focusing are technical there are so many layers to it technical socio cultural economical and uh, governance and financial so you have to be a little bit careful about it understand the data that you are getting very clearly understand it lot of times people fail because they don't uh, want to do the hard work or don't try to understand etc etc and uh, there will be always errors in your data don't get worried about it right like so you you can have an acceptable level of it right like so and the thing is that you have to know what error is there in your data type of thing methodologies a cool methodology doesn't mean it's a useful one always think about it that's why my profile when i said big data machine learning etc etc i'm very much skeptical about many of these processes on now but anyways uh, so the right choice of methodology usually depends on resource efficiency and reproducibility that is very very important one analysis if i do it it should be replicable uh, that is very important and always practice this if you if all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail that is i know to program in python so everything i'll code in python i know to fly a drone every problem i'll answer through drone you know that kind of mentality shouldn't be there you have to identify the problem and figure out the right science and technology that will answer it so be flexible as much as possible and always think about this do we need complex machines always think about it uh, for a simple job of rubbing a tissue paper on your mouth do you need a complex machine like this is something that you can always and remember you are actually working for people science uh, actually for for people by the people etc so when you are doing something you have to figure out that people component very clearly who is going to do it who is the person who is going to be benefited out of it and who is going to replicate it etc 
there can be always an art form to it. If you want to convey information, it is actually art is very much required. At this, I am ending it. And uh, this is my Twitter account. If you want, if you are interested in any of the maps or anything of that sort, you can find a lot over there. Big hand.